All right. Oh, I forgot to move the microphone over. Hold up, wait a minute. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? I don't even know what day it is. To Tuesday afternoon and more linked lists. If you think your brain is fried, I think mine is starting to get fried as well. Um, I forgot to unmute, but then I also forgot to bring the microphone anywhere close to me. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is week eight. I can't believe it. Um, yesterday we had uh, the live stream for the assignment. I hope that it was helpful to all of you. Please feel free to ask questions in the forums. There's going to be a few more things running. We're going to try and um, rejig the help sessions as well to make sure we get people up and running and um, off the ground taking off. Oh, I don't know. I was trying to put some puns in there. So um yep welcome 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 okay um hope everyone is doing okay i know it's week eight it's the pointy end of it um and then the big easter long weekend is coming next week so that's going to be a little bit at least of downtime um i was just talking about it with tammy actually and um, tammy is on the chat today no tommy tommy is enviably elsewhere um, he is enviably going to be watching the Formula One um, whilst we continue to link list um, in Sydney. Anyway, um, so uh, we're talking perhaps we're going to run uh, instead of that Friday, Good Friday lecture, because that lecture is not on because it's a public holiday. Perhaps we're going to do a revision lecture where we just do lots of examples and we talk through all of them and stuff. So we'll anyway, we'll maybe I'll run a poll uh, next week and we can see how everyone feels about that. All right. Excellent. Let's get started. <laughs> oh, gosh, that was a good one. Um, that was a good. So he's, uh, yeah, I like that one. So he's asking for help. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't think he is asking for help. Um, link list reminds me of human centipede. Oh God. Uh, that is not, I hated that movie so much. Um, I couldn't really, I couldn't bear to watch any of it actually. Um, it was just horrible. Um, so I'm really sorry that the link list reminds you of that. That's not nice either. Um, link lists are so much better than that. I feel like my enthusiasm for link lists is just not being passed on right now. Um, I feel like everyone's very like, eh, linked lists, whereas I'm like, oh my God, linked lists. So I hope that maybe, maybe at week 10, when you hand in your assignment, you'll be like, yeah, linked lists, that was the best. Um, or maybe you'll just be like, yes, finally, all assignments are done. It's week 10. We can move on with life. Um, we'll see whatever, either way works. Okay. So thank you, Tammy. Tammy is with me. Yay. Linked lists. Excellent. Um, okay. And someone needs to malik some memory for today's lecture. That's good. Um, I hope you can, yeah, hope that there is space that the malik is not equal to null. So then we're, you know, then we're all okay. Okay. Um, oh, someone's gone through several sheets of paper drawing their assignment. This is what I love to hear because linked lists, you got to draw them. It makes it so much easier and we will continue to be drawing today. So, you know, just in case you thought we'd stop the, the drawing. No, we're going to keep going. All right. So last week uh, in week seven, when we were all fresh, bright eyed and bushy tailed, uh, we did uh, creating a linked list. We did inserting notes in the at the head of the list. We did traversing a list. We did inserting nodes at the tail of the list. And then we also did this really random example because I wanted to show you one way to insert a, a node between two other nodes. So it was a very specific example that if you compile with any other list is not going to work, okay? Because the condition is not quite, uh, it's not, a, it wasn't a very um, flexible condition. Um, and really I just wanted a way to show you how to insert something between two nodes, how to connect the two nodes together, which is why I had such a specific example. So we'll talk a little bit more about that today um, and about a way to, you know, create more flexible conditions or conditions that are kind of fit for purpose. Um, I did spend, I was just saying to Tammy, I feel very frazzled. I spent like an hour before the lecture trying to come up with a better, more complex example that kind of, uh, is a bit closer to the assignment context or like a bit closer to the assignment um, so that you can kind of see that type of example. So 
Um, and then the example that I have in the lecture notes, I changed my mind and then I did another example which I felt was better. So hopefully we'll get to that today. If not, we're going to continue on Friday, so don't worry. Um, this week is just more linked lists and more linked lists and some more linked lists. So you'll have to malloc for lecture 13 and lecture 14. Um, but at least it's all on the same topic. Okay, so today we are going to be doing deleting nodes in a list, which is also part of your assignment. So um, that will hopefully allow you to um, free some memory um, from this, like, no, I can't, I'm not as good at the puns. I will just stop now before I just uh, overdo it. Okay, so we're gonna delete some nodes. We're gonna delete nodes at the head, at the tail, in the middle. Uh, what happens if there's only one item in the list? So we're going to start talking about those edge cases that you have to consider. Um, and, you know, and then we, we I will, I'm hoping to look at a harder example of a linked list that kind of brings it all together, but is also like a little bit closer to uh, kind of what you're doing in the assignment where you're not just kind of, you know, working with um, one int and then you, you know, that's it, um, which is a lot easier to understand. Um, and hopefully we can, we have time to work through it. If not, we're going to work through it on Friday. So don't worry. Um, we can take it at pace um, again, and I'll poll you throughout the lecture so that you can let me know if we need to uh, slow down a bit, uh, fasten up a bit. No, that's not, no, get, get speedier. Um, so we'll, anyway, we'll kind of set the pace as we go um, and hopefully we'll get linked lists, you know, perf perfectly, um, just perfectly understood. Linked lists will be just amazing. Oh no, someone's got null. No. All right, uh, live lecture code today. I think Tammy has posted in the chat uh, where it can be found. Um, and then we're going to continue with that. Um, okay, so let's just do a quick, quick recap. Um, and then we're going to move on to deleting because, you know, it's, it's done. We're done with linked lists. No, we're not done with linked lists, but time to delete. So where can we insert at the linked list? Uh, if you remember, we can insert at the head. Um, so you will have a new head of the list and that new head of the list will then point to the old head of the list. You can insert after the tail. So after the last node, you can place it in here and point this last node to your new node. And then the new node will be null. Um, and then you can insert anywhere in between two nodes. So somewhere in between these two and somewhere in between these two. Um, so someone can access the lecture. Um, yeah, so I haven't fixed the, permi the permissions on the ice cream shop one yet, because that was the one that I was like, I've got to make it happen. Um, so I'll fix the permission on it when we get up to it. Uh, but we're going to be working with the linked list.c um, for now. Okay, so I can also have, uh, you know, other conditions, for example, insert in the middle of the list. So I would maybe go through the list once, calculate how many things there are, figure out where the middle is, and then, you know, you kind of just, you, you insert there. Um, and we can insert after the first element of a list. So you'd count up one, and then you'd go after the first element. So all sorts of conditions, or you can have a matching condition. So you can maybe search for one and insert after that node. So we can have a whole bunch of things that, uh, that where you can insert really any condition that you can think of. Oh, that's quite the pun there. I like it. Love it. Um, okay. So let's talk about deleting a linked list. This is very exciting. So where can I delete in a linked list? There is a number of positions where you can be deleting. Um, and I thought I'd kind of try and summarize them all. And then maybe we'll see if there are other edge cases. But a lot of these are the edge cases that you would get. Um, so usually when you're doing any deleting, this is what you would consider. So you would draw up this and you will basically see, um, can this situation occur? And, you know, maybe it can, maybe it can't, it, depending on the assumptions. So you could delete nowhere, and that's if you have an empty list, there is nothing in the list, um, then you you wouldn't delete anything because there's nothing to delete, okay? So this is a common edge case that people miss um, when there is null, when there's nothing happening, um, and they'll still try to delete. So once you try to, you know, you can't really free memory that's not there. So you're going to run into some troubles. That's a common one. Um, you can delete at the head of the list. So you will delete the head of the list. Um, and then you would check, is there anything on afterwards? You know, if there is a node afterwards, you'd point to it. 
If not, you might go to null. Um, between any two nodes that exist, so you can just take out a node and then point, you know, point them, um, you know, bypassing that node, and and then you can empty out that node. And also, you can delete at the tail of the list, so the last node of the list can also be deleted, um, you know, and then you just point the previous one to a null if there is a previous one. So let's go through it with pictures because I love pictures. And then we can and then we can draw it and we can code it as well so that you can see how it actually reflects out um, and then and then we'll kind of run with that okay so what is this case where we are deleting when there is you know deleting when nowhere so if it's an empty list we would check if the list is empty and if it is we would return null so for example in your code if you have your uh, your current node set to the head you would check if that head is equal to null because if the head is null that means that there is nothing in the list okay so all you're returning is null that there is nothing happening you haven't deleted anything you don't need to free any memory you're okay so that's your one edge case okay then the next one is when there's only one item in the list okay so you only have the head of the list and that's it so if you're deleting this head of the list you would free it up um, and then you, uh, so you would free the head, you would run the free head um, command and then you would just return null, okay? Um, so someone's saying, is, the, is Neil is asking, is the logic for deleting at the head or tail similar to adding at head or tail? Yeah, so very similar. Um, there is just a slight difference with deleting and I'll just talk about that in a second. But, but the logic is very much similar and again, when you're deleting, it really helps to draw them up and also to keep track of where current is and current next is on your drawing because it makes it a lot easier to see where you need to stop. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so if you have to delete at the head of the list with other items in the list, then we would find the node that we want to delete. So I'm saying I want to delete the head. So I want to delete this, this node here. So if I have my struct node current so i have a variable pointer called current that's set to the head of the list and it's over here right now and i'm just going to keep track of my current next as well so if this is current then this is the one that's current next so if i go into the next one that's going to be the second node over here um, and if i want to delete this node what do you think i need to do what do you think will happen so I found the node. This is the node that I want to delete. What do you think I'll need to do next? What do we reckon? Who's got ideas, suggestions? No ideas, uh, swap the head. Yes, yes, excellent. Yep, yeah, well done. Well done. I will change the position of my head. So what I will have to do is I will point my head to the current next. Excellent. Okay. So I will have, ah, that was a horrible sound. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So I'll point the head to the next node. So what I'll do is I'll have a new head and I'll point it to my current next. Okay. Excellent. Now, once I've pointed it to the current next, this thing here is kind of hanging in space. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to delete that current. Okay, so I've, I will delete the current by running the command free current. So if you remember um, who's friends, cousins, siblings with malloc, it's the free command. So when you've malloc some memory, you really need to get rid of that memory. Otherwise that memory is held and you will overwhelm your computer if you do not, you know, if you keep piling up the memory and not deleting it at all. So you, you, you're gonna run into some problems as well. So you wanna free it up. Um, okay, so you'll free that and, and what you'll get is this beautiful new list that's gonna start at the new head here and it's just going to be made up of two elements because the head's now going to be pointing to the second node. Okay, what about deleting when you're in the middle of two nodes? Okay, so for example, um, node with a three um, let's delete it. So I'm deleting this middle node here. Um, we're going to again set the head to a variable current to keep track of the loop. 
um, and you're going to get so used to that. Uh, the struck node current is going to be your um, what we're going to keep doing. Um, and what are we going to do? We're going to need to find the node that we want to delete. So we want to find this node um, with the number three on it. Okay. So we're going to loop until we find the right node. Okay. So if we start our loop with current here and current next is the next one. Okay. Will I move my current to here to delete or what do we think what I'm going to do? Or will I have to stop when current next is equal to three? Because remember, once I'm at this node here, if my current is set at the node with three, I now have no idea what the previous node is. I've we're only moving in one direction and that's the direction forward. So this node with three on it only knows what comes after it. It does not know what comes before it. So where do you think you need to stop? Would you move your current over to the node that you want to delete? Or would you keep your current at the node before you want to delete? And we will go over this again. Don't worry. I know it's, I know it's, yeah. Yeah, 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 well done. So, so yeah, before, excellent. So we're gonna keep the current at the node before the one that we want to delete, okay? And the reason for that is because I'm gonna have to link up this node, the previous node, to the one that comes after it, okay? So that's why I can't move on to this node because then I'll lose track of the one that's before it. So I'm gonna stop at a previous node to the one that I want to delete. So when the current next data is not equal to three, I'm gonna keep going, otherwise I'm gonna stop. So when it comes out of this while loop, the, the what it's going to mean is that current next data is equal to three. So this current, if I'm here currently, and this is the next, I'm gonna to move to here, and data, that means this node here is equal to three. And this is the position that I'm going to stop in, in this instance. Okay. So once I've stopped, I'm going to create a new next to store my node, because what I'm going to do now at this node, I'm going to bypass this node that I want to delete. So I'm going to bypass this node with a three in it. Okay. So I'm going to have a new next and it's going to be pointing to current next, next. So it's going to go current next and then next again. So it's going to give me the address of this last node here. So I've bypassed, I've bypassed the node that I want to delete. Okay. And then I'm going to delete this node. So I'm going to free the current next because this one was the one that was currently in the next one. Okay. And then I will set my current next to the new next. Okay. So I'm going to move the current next to my new next. So now this is going to be um, my new list. So my new list is now going to start at the head and it's going to be composed of a one and a five. And don't worry, we're going to do this in more detail and with code. And I'm going to draw it up again. So don't worry, this is like the pre-teaching moment and then we're going to do into the like intense teaching moment. Okay, deleting one in the tail. Um, this is probably the most pleasant deletion that you will do when you're deleting the tail of the, um, of the list. Um, I don't know if you can call deleting pleasant. Um, so you again set the current pointer uh, to the head of the list so that you're ready to traverse the list. Um, so that means you've got current, current next, and then I just did current next next just to show you, um, you know, kind of how they function. So I want to delete this final node here. Okay, so if I need to find the tail of the list, should I stop on the tail or should I stop before the tail? So where do you reckon I should stop again? What do you reckon? Stop before the tail or at the tail? So again, am I stopping at the node that I want to delete or the previous node to it? Yeah. 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 So, so really, you know, when you're deleting nodes, you're 
always stopping one before the one that you want to delete okay because otherwise you're going to be in big trouble you don't know what the previous note is you're just going to be stuck in a bit of a bit of a situation so excellent the previous node to it so what i want to stop at is whilst current next next is not equal to null so i'm stopping that will stop me kind of at the previous one i'm going to keep going um, keep going so this is going to allow me to know when my node is equal to null and then i'm going to delete this last node free current next um, and i'm going to set my current next to null so i'm going to get rid of it um, get rid of anything that was there beforehand so in all instances we follow a similar structure of what to do when deleting a node ah great question for a two-way linked list so for a doubly double linked list you could stop at the node you want to delete because you keep track of the previous and the next so yeah that's right but for a singular linked list where you're only linking it in one direction you have to stop at the previous one because otherwise you lose track of the previous one that's a great question yep so please draw a diagram okay because once you kind of delete it you'll be able to see that you need to stop beforehand or you'll be able to see that something is not going to work because you've lost you lost track of something you don't know where something exists so please 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 keep drawing the diagrams so to delete a node find the previous node to the one that's being deleted change the next of the previous node and free the node that it's being deleted okay so let's write some code um, and then we'll draw it up okay let's do it actually tammy could you please uh, run us a poll how do we feel now before we've started coding so with our little uh little summary of deleting nodes how do we feel about deleting nodes are we um uh don't understand understand um like totally understand thanks tammy Oh, I like that. Yeah, it does sound simple enough. I agree. Uh, why is my Why is my Tiger VNC not coming alive? All right, I've got a hanging situation. I've got to restart my Tiger. I'm sorry. Um, this is what happens when you get over prepared. Let me, sorry, apologies. Tiger's not into deleting nodes. No. Um, okay, let me. Oh, look, I'll stick with gedit. Um, mine is just uh, because I I know why I did it and I didn't think of it before. But it's because I switched to a hard connection for my internet so that it wouldn't pass out during the lecture and I didn't restart. Okay, so I have copied the same file across, okay, that we've been using in week seven. So that's why it's got so much stuff in there. And also because then it's useful to kind of have, um, you know, already functions in there. Um, so uh, let me just fix it up to have a terminal window as well. Oh. Terminal on the top or on the bottom? Oh, well, let's go top. okay all right that's that's that feels that feels all right um sorry someone else should we switch to something like vs code um you can if you like um we like for you to start with gedit so that all sort of the extra bits and bobs and whistles are removed but if you feel confident you know that you're not uh thrown by all the vs code stuff you can move to vs code um 
but it's better to just stick yeah yeah that's right yeah so what Tom, what tammy said as well yeah all right let's get this party started let's delete some nodes okay so this is our code from last week and so we're going to work with this code um, but we're now going to delete some nodes okay um i don't know should we be creative and should we okay if we are deleting a node i'm going to start commenting in here what do you think you would need to give a function to delete a node and what would be the output Okay, so what do we reckon? What do you reckon we would need to give a function if we're sending it a list to delete? What do you think we would need to give it? Yep, ah, well done, Bill. Yep, absolutely. So we definitely, we're giving it a head. So we're definitely going to give it, and let, let's call the function delete node because creativity is yep and excellent we're going to give it we're going to give it the struct node head can you access the linked list.c or not let me make sure you can in case okay you should be able to access it now if you weren't able to before Okay, try it now. You should be able to. Yeah, okay, try it now. No, still no. Okay, great. Excellent. We're back. Excellent, we're back. Woohoo! Okay, I always, the, the file permissions, I copied the file across and then I forgot to change the permissions on the file. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to, to delete a node. Uh, we've said that we're going to give it the head of the list. I agree with this. So we're going to give it a struct node head of the list and we're going to give it some data that we want deleted. Okay, I agree. And what do we think will be the output of this? What do we think if we're deleting any node in the list? Okay. And remember, we've talked about this kind of like I had all these functions where randomly it was returning um, the head of the list, even though uh, in, in that sort of situation, it didn't really need to return the head. Um, but I said, potentially, sometimes it's good practice because you might, if you change something at the head of the list, you might need to return the head. So uh, kind of almost given it away. What do you think this function will output for us? What do you think it will give back to us? What do you think it will need to give back to us? In case we deleted the head of the list and we gave a new head of the list. What do we reckon? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we really just want to give it, we want, we want to return the head of the list in case that head of the list has changed. Exactly. So we're going to delete, uh, we're going to delete, we're going to return a struct node pointer. Okay. And we're going to return the new head. Exactly. So our function is going to be struct node, delete node. Okay. I'm just going to copy it down so that we get ready to write the function. I'll move it all the way to the bottom here um, and paste it in. Okay. So this function to delete nodes. Okay. And we have input is head of the list in which to delete and item to delete and what's our output output is going to be the new head of the list excellent um so i'm going to write this function to delete any node okay so to make i'm going to make you all think um think 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 let's first I'm going to draw a few things up and we're going to do the simplest deletion first. Okay. And then we're going to start thinking about what potential cases we might have. All right. Let me grab my drawing implement, also called an iPad and a pen. And 
and let me draw a list that we might be able to, you know, that we'll practice with. Okay. So let's say, actually, what's, what does our list currently have in it? And I'll do it the same. Okay. We have got five, three, one, oh, it's a complex list. I should have compiled it to see what numbers it gave me. Okay, I'm just going to do one and then we can we can discuss. Okay. I did not mean to zoom in on that. Okay, so let's have How many things? I'll do three things to start with. Okay, this is going to be my null. You can't even see it, I'm sorry. Here we go, beautiful. Well, this is not beautiful. Let me fix that for you. Okay. This is going to be my head. Okay, and then we've got All right. So let's let's decide what we're going to do. Uh, I could run the program, but I can't right now cuz I've already got stuff that will make it non-compilable. Um, so I, I kind of rushed in a little bit. So let's have a look what we're going to do. All right. First thing is first. Okay. This is going to be your number one thing that you get to do. And you're going to create a current pointer variable um, to traverse the list with. Okay. So struct node current is going to be equal to the head of the list. And it's going to be this head of the list that you've passed into it. So that means what we have now is that I've said, okay, could you please make this the current node? Excellent, okay. We now have a current node and we're ready to start our traversal. Okay, now if we were to do just, just our normal case, okay, uh, let's do first case will be, what should it be? Let's do like we had in the lecture notes. Okay. What if I had an empty list? Cause that's the easiest one to really do. So what if my list was, I've given the head to the list and there's nothing here. It's null. Okay. So what happens in this case when the head is null, there is nothing, there is nothing happening. So that's just equal to null. There's no node. So where, where, when will this situation occur? What do we reckon? Okay. So if there is no nodes in the list, it is meant to be Mark. It is, I'm just, okay. We want to be specific. All right, fine. There we go. Okay, so if there's no nodes in the list, the list is empty. Uh, and this is a common edge case that everyone forgets. Even though it's the most fun one because it's the easiest one to do. What do we reckon? Let's check if the list is empty. Okay. So if the head is equal to null, so if this current is equal to null, that means that there is nothing in this list. Okay. So if the current is equal to null, then we have nothing to delete and we have nothing to return. So we're returning null because our function returns the new head of the list. Okay. 
and there is no head there is nothing there okay there is nothing there so we're returning a null pointer to say that there is nothing there so remember the null pointer means that there is nothing there um there is there are no nodes and that's what we initialize to okay so if the list is empty which means that the head is equal to null okay that means we're going to return a null and we're returning a null because we have to return a pointer okay a node pointer okay excellent that's already done one and remember we've got uh, there are a few so we've got one if it's an empty list Okay, let's do two um, is going to be if we have to delete um, at the head of the list. Let's consider now what happens if we have to delete at the head of the list. Okay, so what happens if we have to delete at the head of the list? Yeah. What do we reckon? So that means I want to delete this node over here how will i do what do you think we need to do if i need to delete this node yeah so that means that we're going to have our our head we really wanted to go over here and point to the next node if there is a next node okay so let's let's first of all do it for our list um, that has other nodes, okay, because that's easier and then we can see if it's going to satisfy everything else as well Okay, so If we are deleting at the head of the list, okay That means that whatever data that we've passed into our function is located as the first element of the list Okay, so that means that my okay, I'm gonna do an else if here so else if I'm deleting the head, which means that my current data, so that means my current data over here, this number over here, okay, then we're going to do, um, uh, and if it's equal to the data that I want to delete, which means that if the first node's data, so current data equal to the data that I want to delete, so if it's equal to five, then I'm going to delete, okay. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, so I could free the current, yeah? Which order would I do it in? What do we reckon? So what are the steps that I need to do? I need to free my current node, okay? I need to set my head, so set the head to the one after it, to the current next, yeah? So I really want to have a new head of the list and it's going to be set to the next one. So current, next, okay. In which order do you think I would need to do this? Would I free the current node first? So would I get rid of this node first and then set the next one as the head? Yeah, 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 well done. So I wouldn't do that because if I delete this node first, I've got no idea what comes next okay I would I wouldn't have I wouldn't have a clue because the next one is stored inside the current so I really you would be ill-advised to delete the current node next so first of all you need something to hold the address of this next one okay so I'm gonna call it a struct um, node and I'm gonna call it my new head because it's gonna be the new head of the list and I'm going to set it to whatever address is sitting inside this current next, okay? So that means I've done this one over here. So I've set the current next. Now, now that I've done that, that means I can delete this current node because I don't really need anything in it anymore. So I'm going to free the current node, okay? And that means that I'm ready to go now. That's, that's all good. So that means I'm going to return my new head back to my main function. Okay, so that's dealing with this case where I'm getting rid of it um, and everything is okay. Um, you know, then I'll just pass the head on to the next one. Okay, so what happens and will this piece of code work if I have a list that looks like this? If I have my five over here and this is my null over here and this is going to partly answer Lewis's question as well. 
Okay, and this is null as well here. So if I have a list that looks like this, okay, and I then go to run this piece of code, will it work for me here? So it will capture this moment here. So current data is equal to data. Yes, it is. So I'll go inside here. And what will it do? Will it capture this results here? So it will say my new head is equal to current next. Okay. So if this is my current over here, this one over here is current next. And remember, even though null is nothing, yeah, even though null is nothing, it's really not going to, it's still considered, you know, an initialized node. It just has nothing in it. You don't really want to access it because there's nothing there. So in fact, when I set my current next to null, so my new head is now going to be equal to null. Okay. Then I'll free the current on line 118. So I'll get rid of this node here and I'm going to return the new head, which actually means that I'm returning the null. Yeah. So I'm saying actually what you're getting now is an empty list. So this case here where we'll capture that moment if there's only one item in the list and you're just returning a null then, or it will also capture, it will return the new head if there's more than one item in the list. So it will also do the case that we have over here up top um, where we had, you know, five, three, one, and then we just deleted the five. Okay. How is everyone feeling uh, with the heads, deleting at the head um, and empty? Um, Tammy, sorry, could you run a quick little poll? How do we feel about um, deleting at the head and deleting an empty? If there's any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Sometimes I get very stressed. Tammy and I both get very stressed when there's not many questions in the chat um, because I'm worried it means you've lost me and I don't want you to lose me. How are we feeling? There is a delay as well on this. I, I keep forgetting. I'm like, no, 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 no one can hear me, but you can hear me. Thanks, Tammy. Okay, so, so far, how are we feeling? We've done two cases. Empty list, beautiful case. And then we've done at the head of the list. Is there any good ways to check for memory that hasn't been freed? Uh-huh, There, we do have a leak check. What if we say struct node head is equal to current next? Do you mean over here struct node head is equal to current next? Do you mean on line 117? Okay, so you're going to have um, a little bit of an issue and I'll show you what happens. I'll show you what happens when the code is ready to compile. I'll show you exactly what happens so that you're familiar with what the error is. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's a great question. So a little confused on the else if condition. Excellent. Okay, so this condition is, first of all, we're going to check um, for two things. Okay. So basically I'm going to just, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. So what happens first is, you know, to delete normally, I would just go through and just delete uh, any node that I want and link up adjoining nodes. So the edge cases are if you have an empty list. So the first thing I want to do before I do any deleting is I want to check if the list is empty. Okay. So that that's the first condition that I will go to because I can't really delete if the list is empty. So it's going to be the first thing that I check for. So what I'm checking really is that I have a head is equal to null, which means that there are no nodes. Okay. So the head is literally pointing to nothing. Okay. There might be some sort of struct node head, but there is no information in it. Okay. It's just, it's an empty pointer. There's nothing in it. It's set to null. So that's the first thing that I've checked for. That's this one over here. I've checked if the list is empty. The next thing I check for, okay, 
is if I have to delete the actual head, okay? Because if I have to delete the head of the list, then I need to make a new head of the list, okay? So in a list that has many things, that's just going to be the next item. So I always check if the list is empty before deleting. If it's empty, then I uh, return nothing. I return null or I just return. I can just keep returning that head, as Tammy said in the chat as well previously. Um, um, and, you know, usually, yes, you can return the head, but you return null to show you understand the list is empty. There's nothing there to return. So you're returning nothing. And then the second case, this else if is checking if the current data, so that means you're still at the head of the list. Okay. You haven't traversed through the list. You're checking if what you're searching for to delete is the first element of the list. Because then what you need to do is you need to set the next element to be the head of the list. And the reason you check for those two things first is because otherwise you need to stop at the previous node. Okay. So if you're not deleting at the head of the list, you're going to stop one before the node that you want to delete. So you're going to have a slightly different logic when you're stopping one before the one that you want to delete. Okay, so let me know if that's clarified it or if it's still confusing. Okay. What's the difference between the empty list and the example we just went through? Uh, I've created an edge case in case that that list is empty. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So now let's do, um, would it be more formal to just return head instead of return new head? Cause this would become complicated if you did it multiple times. So, I mean, you're not going to return, um, you're not, so you need a temporary variable to store this address into. Okay. Um, because if you delete this current node, you'll delete everything that goes with it, which is why I'll show you what happens if you return the head. It's a good question. I'll show you what happens once we compile. Um, okay. Let's do just a normal delete now. Just your, you know, run of the mill delete. Okay. So that's the one that we talked about where we're going to stop. Exactly. So what if the data is in the middle? So what happens if we're deleting something in the middle? So let's try to delete the node with the number three in it. Okay, so let's do a node with three. So delete uh, front of the mill middle. Okay, let's have a think about it. Let's have a think about it. Okay. So again, we've got, uh, you know, this situation here where we've got our struct node current is equal to head. So this is current. So I'm just going to label this one as current next. Yeah. If we're to be, you know, pedantic, I like to label two in advance so I can see what's going on. You don't have to, but sometimes it just makes it easier to see what's going on in my head logically, but not necessarily. And now I've created a little bit of a mess here. I'm just going to draw a line here so you can see that separate. Okay. So we've got a current, we've got a current next, and we've got a current next, next. Uh, someone said, uh, I'll, I'll let Tammy answer it, but yes, that's right. We need a temporary placeholder because we're deleting the head of the list. That's right. So we need a temporary placeholder for the new head of the list. Um, in that first case, that's right. Okay. So let's say we're deleting this node with three. Okay. We want to delete this node over here and we've already said, okay, I'm not, I don't want to move my current to here because it's going to be a little bit of a problem. Okay. Um, because if I move my current to be over here, then I lose track of where the previous node is. So I can't, I can't do this thing here where I bypass it. And, and what I'm really doing is if I delete this, then I'm really want to be linking this node to the one that comes after the one that I want to delete. All right. That means we want to stop when current 
next is the one that we want to delete okay so what that means in our conditions is uh, let me do this Okay, so we're going to find where it is that we are deleting, okay? Okay, so what we have is while, and we're going to be looking for the next, so current next, so we're going to be looking for the next one. So we're looking that if we're standing here that the next one after it the data matches because we want to keep standing on the previous node to the one that we want to delete so current next data is not equal to the data that we want to delete i'm going to keep pulsing through and we're going to see there's going to be a mistake here so don't worry there's going to be an edge case we're going to pick it up in a second but let's first delete the middle and then we can talk about that last edge case what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move my thing along. Okay, move my pointer, my current pointer along. So that, what would that mean is it would mean when I come out of this while loop. So at this point, when I come out of the while loop, my current next data is going to be equal to the data that I want to delete. Okay, this means that I have stopped at the node before the node I want to delete. Okay, excellent. Okay, good, okay. So at this point, I'm ready to do some deleting, okay? How do we think we're going to delete, okay? What we're trying to do is we want to set this next to now be pointing here. So what we want to be doing is we want to be setting the next of our current node. So we want to be setting this node, this next, I want it to point to this node over here. Okay, so how do we think we do that? What do we reckon? What do we reckon? Ideas, suggestions? Yeah, okay. So what we want to be doing is our new next, and I'm going to create a temporary placeholder for it okay so struct node new next okay because i'm going to hold it before i delete it okay is going to be equal to current next next okay now what that's saying okay is i have this new next okay and i'm going to hold the address of current next next so if i'm currently standing at this node here current next next will take me to this node over here which is the node that i want to link to so what i've said is this is now called new next okay so I'm, i've got a placeholder i'm holding the address of this node fantastic okay um now okay i've got that now i'm ready to free the node that i'm going to delete so i'm going to free and the node that I'm freeing is this one over here. So I'm freeing the current next node. Okay, I'm going to free this node. And what that means now is I have my current and I have, I want this next to now actually point to it. Because up until this point, I've just said the address of this one here is stored inside new next, but nothing's pointing to it yet. So I'm going to say that my current next is going to be pointing to, to sorry, not current next next. It's going to be pointing to this one here, this new next, which was the address that we've stored in it. Okay, so what it means is I freed the node to be deleted here.
and then here I've bypassed it okay so I've, I've pointed it back to it okay Uh, so someone said, did you remove the insert middle function from the pre previous lecture for us to insert in the middle? I'm not sure I did. I probably just copied it across. I don't think I did. Okay, and then at some, oh my God, sorry, my dog just tried to move the iPad off my lap. Um, okay, so someone's asked a really great question. What if this list holds two of the same value we want to delete? Okay, that kind of duplication is a lot harder. Um, we're not looking at it yet, and we don't usually do it in your exams either. Um, it will it will be the first time you come to a value. Um, okay, so what have we got then? Uh, and we want to return the head of the list. Okay. So will this capture everything, or are we still missing something? Okay, what are we still missing in this messy, messy drawing here? What could be one more thing that could uh, that could happen? Where else could we maybe need to delete? Where else will we? Uh... Yes, it should be next address. I always get very overexcited about the. Thank you. I just don't want it to compile, you see. And it's going to get so messy now. Oh, anyway. Yeah, delete the tail. Excellent. Okay, let's let's talk about the tail. Let me just fix these uh, up and then we will delete the tail uh, have I got anywhere else anyway it'll let me know once it compiles okay so the other situation that could happen is that is that I'm deleting the tail yeah so what happens if I'm I want to delete this tail huh <sighs> Yeah, that's a great uh, analogy. Yeah, you, you're basically making an incision and you're removing a node and you're stitching the nodes before and after together. That's right, which is why you stop at the previous one and which is why you're now using current next next, you know. And what if the node we're trying to delete isn't in the list? X, oh my gosh, so good at edge cases. Absolutely, fantastic. Um, well, if it goes through the whole list, so if it loops through the whole list here, um, you know, and it doesn't find any matches, um, then we're going to have a bit of a situation here because it's going to still do some stuff. Um, so we will need to, uh, you know, we'll need to fix it up. And that's an excellent, 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 excellent edge case. And what do we think? it's going to be okay are we going to do an array of linked lists oh god oh no, no oh my gosh it's 504 you really do have fun maybe i'll leave you maybe let's have a five minute break um now before and then maybe you can think about what you would do in in the tail of the list and then we can we we will go over it obviously when when we come back let's have a five minute break because otherwise i keep um, I keep holding you a little bit too long. Sorry. Um, so let's have a five minute break and then we will, we will um, return.
All right, we're back. We're back, we're back. Excellent, um, amazing. Everyone's doing some lovely maths. Oh, I love the math stuff. Um, <laughs> oh, some very good uh, calculating there. I will post you a detailed answer. It is, it's 22. Um, so, yep, okay. All right, so let's, uh, Tammy has pointed out as well that when I'm drawing on my whiteboard, um, she can only see it after I finished the movement of drawing. She can't actually see me because there's a lag um, between me drawing and it coming up on the on the screen. I'm going to try drawing a little bit with my mouse pad, see if that's um, fixing that any. Um, and if it's not, uh, then I'll go back to the iPad. Okay, so a few people had a few ideas. Uh, um, a few people had a few ideas what to do. Um, put the tail free, then current. Okay, okay. So let's let's have a look what the situation is. Okay, so let's say I'm deleting. Let me show you. Okay, let's say I'm deleting this node here. Okay. What happens if I'm deleting this node over here? Okay, so I'm deleting the tail of the list. Okay, great. And my search over here says whilst current next address data. So that means if I'm deleting this one, okay, then what will happen is, aha, again, horrible nose, I'm, noise, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's say I'm deleting the tail of the list. If I'm deleting the tail of the list, this is my current here. This means this is current next. And this means this is current next next. Okay, now if I'm deleting this node here at the tail of the list, so I'm deleting the tail, that means that I'm going to, I need to, and I'm stopping at the node previous to the node that I want to delete. That means I'm going to move one over in my while loop. Okay. So that means that I'm going to have this as my current node, this as my current next node. And that means that this here is going to be my current next, next. Okay, so what implicate, oh, you can't actually see that. That's quite annoying. Let me extend this out for you so you can see what I've written. Okay, so what it means is that if I've stopped one, that means the one before the one I want to delete is current, then the one I want to delete is the current next, and then this null is my current next next. Okay, now if I want to delete this node, okay, then I'm going to be trying to link up. Um, what am I going to be trying to link up? I'm going to be trying to link up the new next node is going to go to the current next next. So it's going to be pointing to null. Yeah. I'm going to free the current next and the current next address is going to be equal to that null. Okay. So do we think that this would work? Okay. What do we think? So this part would work okay. Would this part work okay if we're looking for this point here? What happens if I'm over here as my current? So what happens if we have this situation where this thing is not going to be in, in I've gotten to this one here um, and this is my current, I'm still looking for my data point. So my current next address data is going to be equal to null, isn't it? So this is someone in uh, someone above. I remember said, what happens if this thing is not in the list? Okay. So what happens then if, if this, if this node is not in the list, if I go to over here, what will happen then? What will be my issue? I'm going to access a null pointer and, and nothing is going to happen because there's no way I can access a null pointer. Yeah. So we should really be checking over here that uh, something is not equal to null as well. Okay. 
Now, what should we be checking for? What can we check for? So if I'm standing over here, then I want to check that my current next, next, but who's getting a 404? What's happening? Oh, someone, I, I get it. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. My gosh. See, it's like, I feel, I almost said it's Friday afternoon. It's not Friday afternoon. It's Tuesday. We still have the whole week ahead of us. Okay. So over here, then what I'm going to change is I'm going to also check. Okay. Over here that my current next, next is not equal to null. Okay. Ah, uh, this next address is terrible because it's really pushing me over all the counts. And now you can't see what I'm doing. Expand it out a bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so what happens here is now when we come out of the while loop, it could now be for two reasons. Okay, either my current next data is equal to the data. So either this case is correct or my current next next is equal to null. Okay. Now I want to do my deletion. Okay. I want to do my deletion only if this is the case. Okay. If that node is in there, then that's, that's the one that I want to actually treat. So this is what I'm going to check here. So once I come out of the while loop, okay, it's going to be either here so either current next data is equal to data that I want to delete. Okay. Or current next, next is equal to null. Okay. So what that will mean is I will really want to check that I am in fact going to be deleting if my current next data is equal to data. So that's the case where I want to actually delete. So if it's equal to the data, nope, don't want to do that. Then I'm going to do this deletion here. Okay. And then I'm going to return head as the last thing I do. Um, and that should hopefully uh, make sure that we've captured every single possible case. Okay, so someone's using, why am I using the and? Okay, um, that's because I don't, I want to stop uh, if either one of them is not correct. Okay, exactly. So because if we're equal to null, then we're accessing a null pointer. So I want to check that both conditions are not true. Whilst they're both not true, I'm going to move, move, move along. And so um, if this, so when I come out of it, it's either going to be, I came out of it because of this, or I came out of it because of this and which one did I come out of it for? So which one of it was not true? So I'm going to check if it's because of this, then that means I'm going to delete. Uh, I'm going to come out and I'm going to send it over. Otherwise I'm going to return the head because nothing has really happened. Okay. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's try and run it. I think, um, we've done a lot of code and we haven't run anything yet. Uh, I'm going to, oh, it does have the insert middle. Does the insert middle work? I'm not sure. No, it doesn't because it really needs them to be. Okay. Now it will work. And we actually want to delete as well. So we'll print and we want to delete node. And we're going to give it the head pointer and which node should we delete first? Okay. I've made the list one, three, five. Should we delete? I don't know. Let's delete one, which will be the head of the list. And then we'll print our, the list. Oh, Bill is saying three. All right, let's do this one and then we can do three. Okay. DCC linked list dot C O linked. Okay. Ah. Uh. 
I got over excited. Okay, excellent. I knew that somewhere I will forget to do next address. Quite a lot of places. Um, okay. Okay. In, in, insert middle doesn't have a thing. <gasps> Look at this debugging happening on the fly. Okay, and then I swear I forgot my current next address. Will it, it will not compile. Um, here's, oh, this is just missing this everywhere. No, just there. Okay, will it compile now? What do we think? Yay! Um, so just a few little bugs. No biggie. We can fix it. But something has happened. Hmm. Great. It compiles, but it does not run. So somewhere there is a an infinite loop that we've just become stuck into. Okay, let's see where this infinite loop is. I think I have an idea. Yep, where is this infinite loop? Where have I created a situation that is causing this? It's like who can spot the who can spot the bug? We should run a competition. This is what happens when you keep piling code into. Uh, I'm moving it along here. I swear it's this, it's this thing here. I swear it is. So one of the principles of debugging, and this is why functions are awesome. You just kind of move out functions until you find where the issue is. <laughs> nice try, Troy. Okay, let's see it's, if it's this giving us the situation, the issue. Okay, so it was that, but then now this is also not working. Excellent, we're doing so well here. <laughs> um, Malik, use after free. Oh my gosh, we definitely don't want that. Uh, let's see what's happened here. Aha, because when we deleted a node, we actually have a new head, okay, and yeah. Okay. All right. So because I've deleted the head here, if I would have deleted something else, this wouldn't affect me. So look at this. No, I did not mean to do that. I forgot to recompile, compile it again. And then now if I run it again, you see how it's not going to affect me at all um, because I haven't deleted the head of the list. But when I delete the head of the list, okay, because Remember my delete node function returns the new head, but I haven't actually, I haven't actually given it any return here. So, uh, what I could do is I can actually print and I can use that, run that inside there if you like, or I can give it a new, a new something. So if we do it like this and that insert middle clearly needs to be fixed. Okay, and so now we're deleting. So now it's doing um, the list for us, okay? Um, okay, 
Uh, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? How is everyone feeling? Tammy, uh, can you please uh, run me a poll, please? How is everyone going? How is everyone feeling about deleting? Was it a headless list? It was indeed. Um, and I just uh, feeling, oh, excellent. At least someone's feeling linked. And then I'll kind of go to this uh, example where we bring it all together again. So I'm going to move off deleting. Um, a little frazzled is okay. So remember, this is the first time you've heard it, okay? And if you've noticed, I'll do one lecture where I'll go through it. Then the next lecture, I'll go through it again. And the next lecture, I'll kind of try and bring it together again. So don't worry. This is the first time we've done delete. We will still be doing um, deleting, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Why do I print the delete function? Okay, so I'm not printing the delete function, but remember my delete node function returns the new head of the list. So when this function runs in here, what it will do is it'll give me a new head of the list and then this function will use that new head of the list. Um, and I need to do this because if I delete the head of the list, so if I'm deleting the one, I need to know what the new head is. Um, and someone said, also what happened to multi-file projects? We're going to do them on Friday. I've deterred them for as long as I could so we could do lists. Um, I'm obviously obsessed with lists. Um, why did I not use an else if condition for the delete function after checking for the first if? You mean down the bottom? Because if it got to the end kind of thing and it came out of there because um, my next next was equal to null, then I don't really need to do all that much. Yeah, so you could do, you could absolutely do um, struct node new head uh, is equal to delete node so you could do it like that and then you can just um, you know print the new head like that so you definitely can do that yeah okay um, how are we getting there let me have a look at the poll 66 votes come on let's vote I want to see where we are. Okay, quite a few people confused. Okay, that's okay. Don't worry, we're gonna go over it again. Um, we're about to go back to adding things into the list um, in a harder example. Okay, okay, a few more people voting. Excellent, okay. All right. Let's go to a harder example and then we're going to come back to deleting as well. Okay. Um, and we're going to come back to it with, with a particular example as well. Okay. So don't worry, we will be coming back to things. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now, if you were, um, very, a very keen bean and you looked at my lecture slides um, yesterday um, or even today, uh, they're still saying the wrong things. I didn't upload the right one because I only changed my mind two hours ago. Um, so it used to be a World Cup problem because um, I'm obsessed with the World Cup, um, but uh, it didn't fit into what I wanted to show you because I wanted it to be closer to the assignment. So I've got a different problem that I came up with. I hope that it's not going to be too intense. Um, I think it's easier maybe than the understanding the World Cup, especially if people don't, I don't know, don't love football. Who doesn't love football? Um, surely everyone loves football. Anyway, tangent. Okay, so we're going to run an ice cream shop because we haven't done an ice cream problem for weeks now. So I feel like we need to go back to this ice cream. So I've decided to run an ice cream shop and I want to create a program that can take in all the flavors of ice cream that I have to offer by adding them to the end of a list. I want to be able to print out the flavors. I would then like to add the flavors in alphabetical order and then I'm gonna delete the flavors as we finish them. Obviously, we're not gonna be able to do everything today, but we're gonna be able to do a little bit today. 
<laughs> I can see that someone's called it soccer. Um, clearly not a fan. The game is called football. Um, so I was having this huge um, discussion in a randomly in a staff meeting about who is going to have if it should be called football or soccer. Football. Oh, Tammy. Oh, I have still to try that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Uh, let's open my other file. And my other file is going to be, I forgot what it's called, ice cream shop. <laughs> yeah, but like, like I know that Australian football is called that, but it doesn't make any sense because you can, you can, like, it doesn't make any sense. Football, you can't touch it with your hands. You can only touch it with your feet. Anyway, this is clearly, I've, you know, I will just, yeah. Okay, so let's actually, I think you can't access the ice cream shop function. Let me make it available to you. And yeah, you should be able to see it now. So I've copied in here what we wanted to do, okay? And so, amazing. Now, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I get it, like, in football. I love watching when they, you know, fall down and make a big old fuss about it. Um, if you watch the Women's League, it's, you know, they don't do that. Just saying. Um, anyway, okay, so the starter code. This is a starter code that I've decided to give you because it's similar to what... Um, you know to what's actually happening as well am i italian i am not italian no not at all i am something else i i was not born here in australia and i did grow up for a little bit somewhere else um but yeah people last term tried to guess where i was from no one got it no one got it well i started guessing competition now where am i from Okay, so we've got our normal um, our normal things happening. So STDIO, I've included a standard STD lib um, and string.h. Okay, none of those. Then I've got a root structure. Oh, a few people saying Russia. I'm actually from the place Russia is trying to wipe off the face of the earth. I'm from the Ukraine. Um, okay, so we've got our root structure, um, which is a shop, okay, and the struct shop has inside it a struct ice cream flavor, and then we have a struct ice cream, yeah, um, sorry, sorry, I need a second. <clears throat> Yes, I should have switched over to the code. Apologies, here we are, back in the code. Okay, so, uh, and you should be able to see the code now as well. Okay, so we've got our root structure, same way as in your assignment, you have a root structure for a flight and then you have airports coming out um, off your flights. I've got a root structure of a shop and then I'm going to have some ice cream flavors coming out of it, okay. And what that means is that I will be placing my head of the list is going to be inside uh, inside here, actually. So uh, I'll draw it up for you. Don't worry. OK, then we have a structure of our ice cream and it will have our quantity of ice cream. I should have called it quantity, but I called it number. So now it's just called number. Um, and we have the name of the flavor. And then, of course, because it's a linked list, we're going to have a next flavor. Um, and I hope everyone has started their assignment, but I hope that this will be somewhat helpful. Okay, then I've got some helper functions in here. I've got a struct shop, set up shop. So I'm setting up the shop. So opening up my shop before I fill it up with um, ice cream flavors. Okay. 
And then I'm going to have an ice cream create ice cream function. That's where I'm actually going to create uh, the ice creams and then I'm going to append the ice cream. So I'm going to add it to the end of my list and then I'm going to print the ice creams because one of the only ways to check that your linked list is working is to print it out because then you can actually see what's going on. Um, and I'll point out this really common mistake that people make that you will see if you start to do your, um, when you start to do your assignment. And then I thought, oh, why not? Let's do an insert alphabetical just to really throw you, um, you know, under the bus a little bit um, and see how you go. Um, so we might try and do this one, hopefully, well, probably on Friday with the time, the way it's going. Okay, so let's, let's try it out. Okay, so, so far I've kind of just put whatever the ice cream flavors are into, um, into my list. I haven't actually, um, I haven't done, um, I haven't, I haven't taken input in and perhaps on Friday we can take the input in from the command line. So you get a little bit more practice. Um, I know a few of you had problems with that interpret line in the assignment. Um, and the um, live stream goes into that in more detail and breaks it down a lot. There's also been a few questions on the forum about it um, and they have been answered um, quite um, extensively as well. No, because cookies and cream is just a, is just not a great flavor. Um, let's be honest, actually neither is chocolate. Um, who, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, if you go on, fill the chat with what your favorite flavors are, then I've really struggled. I mean, there's a flavor called rainbow in there. Um, so it's a bit disturbing. Oh, the live stream, it's not linked in. I will fix it straight after this lecture, okay? Um, oh, cookie, everyone loves cookies and cream. This is not mint. Oh, chalk mint, <gasps> mango, cheese. Is that a flavor? Salted caramel, I agree. Ah, forever shared, delicious. Um, oh, yum, yes, yes. Ah, oh, Tammy, oh, yeah. Um, rum raisin, oh, very, very uh, grown up taste. I always thought whenever adults ordered rum and raisin ice cream, it was quite intense for me. Um, let's let's change some of these dirty ice cream flavors. I'm not changing Dolce because that's my favorite flavor. I love Dolce de Leche. Um, okay, no one said chocolate, so no one really likes chocolate. So let's do, cheese is a valid flavor. Mm, okay, all right, fine. Cheese can become a flavor. Um, it works with what I'm trying to do. And let's do, what was the other one? Lots of people said matcha flavor, so we'll do that one. And I really think this rainbow is just a weird, weird flavor. What's Dolce de Leche? Oh, you've never been to South America. Um, I backpacked around South America for quite a few months when I was a lot younger. And I came back with a very strong addiction to Dolce de Leche, which is uh, like caramel flavor. Um, it's basically like, I don't know, boiled condensed milk until it becomes caramel and it's sickly sweet and it's just uh, beyond delicious. Um, let's do, I, I don't want mint, tiramisu, let's do tiramisu, why not? So now you really, you must try dolce de leche. It's so delicious. You spread it on bread um, for a really unhealthy breakfast in the morning. Um, just a bit of everything. Oh, bubble gum. I like bubble gum flavor. That reminds me of when I was a kid. Yes, let's do bubble gum. Okay, excellent. All right, excellent. Okay, so in my main function, all I'm doing, okay, all I'm doing is literally uh, doing, um, it's not, it's not, it's not, no, it's not process, 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 I guess it could be. Uh, that's just the fast way to make it if you boil condensed milk. Um, there is like a more acquired way to make it. But that's when you get desperate. Although you have to boil it for four hours. So you have like four hours of desperation for it. Anyway. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm setting up shop. And inside that shop I'm going to then uh, once I've set up the shop, I'm going to add some ice creams to the list. So I'm going to append them all the way to the end all the time, all the way to the end. And then I'm going to try and do this insert alphabetical as well. But I'm just going to get rid of that for now because we're probably not going to have time to do it. Um, so uh, someone's asked, well, we need to tackle assignment two in a similar way where we append airports to the end of the list. So 
you I believe have you can have two separate functions uh, you will have a function to set up the flight and you might uh, you know and then you might append the airports but you're also pending them to the end so the the thing that's different in the assignment is here I have provided you uh, this struct shop has an ice cream flavor and if it's a struct ice cream that it's inside here right so I'm saying the head of the list is going to be stored in here in your assignment too, you have both the head and the tail in this root structure. Okay, so let's set up the shop to start with. Okay, function to set up the root shop structure. Uh, what do we think will be the inputs and outputs? What can you see will be the inputs and outputs over here? What do we reckon? And you can see what they are over here really from the function. What do we reckon? Oh. Am I still on? Is everyone there? What do we reckon is the inputs and outputs? So look, the outputs, there's nothing here. Yeah? So the outputs in this case, nothing, because I'm just setting up the shop. Okay, and then the inputs, what's going to go, sorry, the output, oh my gosh, backwards. The inputs is nothing because I'm not, I'm setting up the shop. I have nothing to give it yet. Okay, but the output is going to be my struct shop. So the output is going to be my struct shop so i'm basically going to be returning the head of the list okay so let's create this lovely shop so the first thing you're going to do is i'm going to create a new shop now if i want to create a new shop and let me just close this up so i can draw it as well okay let me let me draw this up So what I want to do is I want to create a structure that kind of looks like this. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to have a, oh God, I'm not very good at doing that. No, no, I think I'm going to return to my iPad. Apologies, everyone. I'm not very good at drawing with a trackpad, it seems. I'm going to return to my iPad. Um, apologies if you can't if it looks a bit jittery because of the lag. Okay, so basically my structure is going to be something that looks like this. So when I create my shop, okay, I'm creating Okay, so this is going to be my struct shop here. Now inside my struct shop, what I have is something called a struct ice cream flavor. So in here I have my struct ice cream flavors. And then from flavors, I start my other list. So I actually start my linked list. So that what that means is this inside here is the head of my list. Okay. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this struct shop. I'm going to give it some space, okay? Because the first thing we always do is we create our, you know, we give it some space. So we malloc it some space. So let's do that. So I'm going to malloc size off struct shop. Okay, excellent. So what that has done is that has created just the structure of it. Nothing is happening yet. So what it did is it created just this empty box um, and this is your struct shop and it's called shop. Okay. It's of type struct shop and I'm just going to get rid of this. So it's called shop. It's of type struct shop, which means it has another struct in here that's called flavors. Okay. Excellent. And this is of type struct ice cream. 
Okay, so I've just created that. But what I need to do is I need to give it some value. So I need to initialize the things in here. So I'm going to initialize. I don't have any nodes yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my shop flavors is going to be equal to null. Now what that's doing is that's saying there is no nodes here. That's still going to null. Okay. And then I'm going to return my shop. Okay, because I'm returning that really the head of the list. I'm returning this memory space that I've created and I've really created the head of my list. Okay, excellent. So now I've created my shop here. Okay, and I've returned the head of the list. So this is now storing the head of the list and you can see that I keep passing it onwards to all of my functions now. Okay, so let's go on and now let's look at this append ice cream. So we're going to append an ice cream to the back of the list. Okay, so before I append an ice cream, I should really be creating an ice cream because, well, let's just try doing it inside my append. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, let's say we want to append an ice cream and then we'll see how we can use it in here. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create an ice cream to append. Wouldn't you agree? So I need to create this airport or this flight that I'm going to add in. So I'm going to say I'm going to create something of type struct ice cream and I'm going to call it just to be creative a new ice cream. Okay. And I'm going to call the function create ice cream. And I'm going to give it the name and the number and the name and the number is given to me over here. So when I did append ice cream, I gave it the head of the list. Okay. Then I gave it the name of the ice cream, which was the string. And I also gave it the number. So the quantity that I have of that ice cream. So now I'm using this name in here and this number in here to create the ice cream. Okay. Let's create the ice cream. So I'll go up to this function now to create the ice cream. So this function here is going to uh, return for me a new ice cream. So a new ice cream node is going to be the output. Okay. So the output will be the new ice cream node. Okay. And the inputs is the name of the ice cream and number available. Okay. Similarly, when we're creating an ice cream, if I want to create it, what I want to do is I want to make some space for it to start with. Okay. So let's create some space for the ice cream. Who remembers how we create some space? So let's create some space. So we'll have a struct node, new ice cream. And I'm going to malloc some space for this ice cream. So what it's going to do is it's going to create an empty node for me. So malloc size of, and it's actually going to be a size of, of my struct ice cream. Excellent malloc. Well done. Okay. So what that line is going to do is it's going to create for me an empty node here. And this is an ice cream node. So a struct ice cream. And it's going to have the name of the ice cream and it's also going to have the number. So when I first created, it's going to be absolutely empty. There's nothing in it. I haven't placed anything in it. So now I have to place things in it. So what I want to do is I want to assign the name to the name part of it and the number to the number part of it. So my new ice cream. Uh, now, if I want to assign a string, Okay, to uh, so let, let's do the number first because the number is easy. So if I do number, that's equal to number. So now whatever number I've sent is going to go inside number. How do I assign a string? Okay, how do I assign a string? Can I just do, um, can I do something like this? So new ice cream name is equal to name. Can I do something like that? No, I can't. Well done. Well done. Well done. Everyone's using string copy. Excellent. So remember, because in C, a string is an array of char. 
okay? You can't just copy this array over to another array. So you use the string copy function, which does it for you, okay? That function actually copies the things in one by one, okay? So what you're gonna use is you're gonna say string copy, so string CPY, that's a function that's already available to you that copies a string to a string, and it goes destination and then source. So the destination where I wanna copy it into is my new ice cream name, and I wanna copy the name into it, okay? So that will fill that up. And now in my ice cream, I only have one other thing, and that's my next flavor that needs to be filled up. So I'm gonna initialize the next flavor as well. So I'm gonna say new ice cream, next flavor, and I don't have anywhere to put it, so I'm going to uh, do a null to it. Yeah, and Bill is correct. If I've used this function over here, string copy, I need to include um, I need to include this string.h, okay? Because that's the library that all the string functions are in. Okay, excellent. So now I've created a new node, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to return it. So I'm going to return this new ice cream that I've created. That's not what I meant to return. Okay, I'm going to return that back. So this is now going to come back here and inside my new ice cream here is going to be all the details for the node. So what that means is, let's say the first time I've said append ice cream cheese three, okay? It's gonna go into my function here and it's gonna say, okay, create ice cream cheese three. So on line 73 here, what we've done is we've assigned the three over, okay? So we've assigned our three over and then on line 74, we've copied the name cheese into it. So here we've got on line 73, we've put this in and then here we have said, and I haven't made enough boxes, that should really be three boxes because the name cheese went into here and then the next is going to be, next flavor is actually going to be null. So that's going to be my null for next flavor. Okay, excellent. So now I have this empty node. It's not linked in anywhere, okay? But I want to hook it up to my, I want to append it to the end of the list, okay? So let's now try and do the logic for this happening, okay? So if you remember, the way we start to append things and the way we always do, thing, do things when we're playing around with linked list is we have this current pointer which we use to traverse the list. Okay, so struct ice cream current okay so i've created a current pointer now where is the head of the list stored where do we think the head of the list is stored so usually we just say oh yeah that's equal to head but where is my head right now in this example what do we think where is the head located um where did i create the head that i want to link it up into Yep, inside the shop, excellent. Yep, excellent, inside the shop and inside the flavors, okay? So my head is actually sitting inside shop flavors. I think it's called flavors, my God. It's called flavor, apologies. Okay, so the head of the list is sitting inside the shop flavor. It's sitting inside here. This is the head of the list, actually. Um, and what I want to do is I want to store the address of this new ice cream in here. So this is right now the new ice cream node. And I want to link it up like this. Okay. And I know this is just brings another element of complexity into. This is similar to how your assignment works with the airport and the flights which is why I kind of had to do this. Okay, now, what is the potential situation here? So I could append to the end of the list, but what if I have nothing in the list to start with? What if it's an empty list and this is going to be my head, okay? So that's what I'm going to check for first. What if it is an empty list and uh, it is going to be the head. Okay, so if it's going to be the head of the list, 
then what I want to do is I want to check. So if my current is equal to null, okay, that means that there is nothing in this list. It means it's an empty list. So this means Okay, this means it's an empty list and that means that I'm going to be saying that my new ice cream is actually going to be the head of the list, which means that my shop flavor, and I'll just quickly, actually, you know what? Can I say here current is equal to new ice cream? What do we think? What do we think? Can we, can we do this? What do we reckon? What do we think? What happens if I do this? And this is a common mistake. Maybe I like the optimism. Yeah, even more optimistic than maybe. I love it. Okay, the executable's not responding. Okay. So if I have done this, okay, if I've said current is equal to null, okay, which means that in here is null, I'm saying set the current to the new ice cream. Great. Now what happens when I run it again and I give it the head of the list, which is located in here? In here, that's still set to null right now because I'm going to say, okay, set the current again and overwrite it again. So every time I append, it's just going to keep overwriting itself. So if it is the head of the list, I need to be very specific. Okay. I'm going to point it to the head of the list and say shop flavor is going to be equal to new ice cream. Okay. So I have got to put it in. So now I've linked it in and now I can keep using current. Okay. And now we're done. I'm just going to return back to the main function for now. Okay. And now we have, oh my God, it's six o'clock. And now we have six o'clock. Let's just quickly finish it. One minute. If I'm appending to the end of the list, okay. Uh, appending to the end of the list. So we've just had this situation happen where we have now said this is now equal to that. So the head of the list is now connected. So remember, if we are appending to the end of the list, we're going to pulse through the list and then we're going to add it in at the end. Okay. So that means I want to be inserting it over here. And what will it be? So if this is my current, I want to insert it after my current. Yeah. So I want to check what should I be checking for? Or have I fried everyone? I think I've fried everyone. I can feel everyone's brains exploding with my current next, current next, next, current next, next, next. You know what? We're going to finish there to today because we've, I think I've fried you all. We will continue this on Friday. I want to say morning, but it's not morning. It's three o'clock, but we will continue this. Um, it's going to get so much more exciting when we append it all to the list. It's going to be super, super awesome. So, uh, sorry. Yeah, I've, I've completely charged you. I, I can see that. Um, I can, I'll quickly, and absolutely we can get a recap on Friday. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. We can get a recap on Friday. So the reason that current is not working is if you do current here is equal to new ice cream. Every time you call a pen, you're just going to keep replacing the current. Okay. So it's going to be, you're going to keep, you're going to end up with nothing. You're just going to keep replacing the head. Um, so it's not going to work because it's at the head of the list. You're not just adding to the head. Um, your head is actually changing. Don't worry. We're going to go through everything again. I know how everyone feels because I remember how I felt the first time I did linked lists and it just all felt, you know, it just, just, it was just washing over me in waves. So don't worry. We will be, we will be going over it again. Okay. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm sorry for frying you. Um, I will continue to do it on Friday though. I'm so impressed that you're still, you're still moving through it. It's, it's so impressive. Uh, I'm so, so happy that you're still with me uh, and you haven't maybe lost me a little bit, but you're still going. So thank you so much. And I will see you on, um, on Friday.
for another exciting um, for another exciting adventure, I suppose. Bye, everyone. Bye.